Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Clark, Research Analyst for Money and Markets with your Money and Markets Week Ahead, What to Watch on Wall Street. Investors started getting a little nervous last week about the stock market as the Dow, NASDAQ, and Russell indexes bounced back and forth throughout the week. Uh, now, coming up this week, there's another big initial public offering slated, uh, but here's more of what you can watch for uh, on the week ahead on Wall Street. So there is another IPO uh, scheduled to, uh, on the calendar for this week. Uh, it is a, a good size one. Um, Oscar Health Insurance Company plans to uh, price its IPO on March 4th. The company will list on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol OSCR. Uh, Oscar Health Insurance Company is basically just what it says. Uh, it provides health insurance products and services. It was founded back in 2012. The company offers health insurance coverage for individuals and families, as well as Medicare eligible adults. And part of its individual coverage does include uh, free virtual doctor's visits, which is kind of commonplace nowadays with uh, most health insurance, especially with the coronavirus uh, pandemic. Uh, now, Oscar does offer health insurance plans for small businesses to offer to their employees as well. Uh, it operates in 291 counties across 18 states. The company said its members had more than 5 million health care visits in 2020. The company received at least $1.74 billion from investors such as Alphabet Incorporated, which is the parent company of Google, Fidelity Management Research, Formation 8, General Catalyst, uh, Coastal Ventures, and Thrive Capital. Uh, they all contributed uh, during series funding. Uh, for Oscar. Its revenue dropped 5.2% from 2019 to 2020. Its operating margin was minus 86.9% in 2020. So just something to think about uh, if you're considering investing in this IPO. Now the offering, uh, the New York-based uh, company uh, plans to raise about a billion dollars by offering 31 million shares at a price range of between 32 and $34. Uh, according to Renaissance Capital, uh, existing shareholders uh, intend to purchase about $375 million worth of shares in the offering. At the midpoint of the price range, if, so you're looking at $33 a share, uh, Oscar Health would see a fully diluted market value of $7.7 .7 billion. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Allen Company, uh, Wells Fargo Securities, Bank of America Securities, and Credit Suisse are all book runners on the deal. Now, we'll take a deeper dive into earnings for this week. Uh, cloud data warehousing firm Snowflake Incorporated trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker SNOW. It made pretty big news when it priced its initial public offering back in September of 2020. The IPO had an initial price range of $75 to $85. That was revised to be, to be uh, between $100 and $110 before it launched. It, right, it hit right around 100, 120 on launch day. But on its first day of trading, the stock reached above $300 per share for a massive gain. The stock pushed back the, pushed back the price a little bit uh, uh, later in the day, but it still saw a triple digit gain uh, on its first day of more than 100%. Uh, the company was able to raise nearly $3.4 billion by selling 28 million shares. It was the largest, it is, it is actually currently the largest software IPO in history. It surpassed the 2007 IPO of VMware Incorporated, which raised about a million dollars in its IPO. Wednesday, uh, the company will release its quarterly earnings report for the quarter ending January 31st of 2020, uh, 2021 rather. Uh, over the last four quarters, the company has managed to increase its total revenue, but its earnings per share has remained relatively stagnant. Its earnings are in negative territory uh, and experienced a four cent per share drop over the last two quarters. Snowflake has been consistently able to raise its gross profit over the last four quarters, however. In January of 2020, the company recorded profits of 53.2 million. That rose to 92.9 million in the quarter ending October 31st of 2020. The consensus forecast for Snowflake to continue report is to continue reporting an increase in revenue, but negative earnings per share. Wall Street's expecting earnings of minus 17 cents per share on revenue of $178.5 million. I have a lot of high hopes for Snowflake, uh, and I'm encouraged by the continued revenue momentum. However, the stock is back down to earth in terms of its stock price. On Monday, the Institute for Supply Management, or ISM, will release its Manufacturing Purchase Managers Index report on business. Uh, the monthly report examines uh, positive and negative responses from managers regarding new orders, backlog of orders, inventories, employment, prices, all sorts of things that all are culminated within the manufacturing sphere. Uh, any reading of, an ind of the index over 50 is considered expansion in the manufacturing market, while 49 or below is considered contraction. The index uh, was at a low of 41.5 back in April of 2020, thanks in uh, large part to the coronavirus pandemic slowing down manufacturing as a whole. 
It hit 60.7 in December of 2020, but fell back to 58.7 in January of 2021 as managers remain slightly optimistic about the first quarter of the year. The forecast for the PMI in February of 2021 is to drop just slightly, not much, uh, remain fairly neutral at 58. Point six. To finish off the money markets week ahead, here's a look at some of the uh, key earnings reports that are due out this week. On Monday, we'll see earnings from Zoom Video Communications Incorporated, Novavax Incorporated, and Scientific Games Corporation. On Tuesday, uh, the big one of, of the week is likely to be Target uh, Corporation. They will report on Tuesday along with Ross Stores, AutoZone Incorporated, Kohl's Corporation, and NV5 Global. On Wednesday, Snowflake, as we've talked about already, they will report as well as Marvell Technology Group Limited. On Thursday, Broadcom. If you remember, Broadcom was a stock I've talked about in a recent Bull and the Bear podcast. You can check out those videos uh, on our YouTube channel or on, our pi- or any, or on any podcast syndicator. Uh, but Broadcom will report on Thursday as well as Costco uh, Wholesale Corporation, Kroger Company, and Sienna Corporation will report on Thursday. And on Friday, Big Lots uh, will highlight the earnings to wrap up the week. That's all I have uh, coming up on the uh, week ahead on Wall Street. Until next time, I'm Matt Clark, Research Analyst for Money Markets, and your host of the Bull and Bear Podcast, the Marijuana Market Update, and the week ahead. Wishing you all safe trading.